and welcome to the game show, So You Want to Be a Meteorologist, with your host, meteorologist Sarah Spivey. I thought it would be fun to take you through a weather quiz with some quirky, cool information. Try your hand at it. This quiz is best for people and kids who are in late elementary school or older. So let's try our hand at So You Want to Be a Meteorologist. The first question up is, how hot is a lightning strike? A, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, B, 20,000 degrees Fahrenheit, C, 30,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or D, 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit? Think about your answer. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. The answer is 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And in fact, a lightning strike is five times hotter than the surface of the sun. How is that even possible? Well, lightning strikes happen really quick. So if unless you physically get struck by a lightning bolt, we don't burn up uh, from it being miles away. And again, the reason for that is, again, because the lightning bolt is so quick. 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, though. That's pretty hot. Next question. This one, hopefully, a lot of you know, but just want to throw it out there. At what temperature does water freeze and become ice? Zero degrees Fahrenheit, 17 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 degrees Fahrenheit? Five seconds, four, three, two, one. The answer is C, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's when water becomes ice. And that's when uh, ice on the ground is possible too. So that's when as meteorologists, we really have to be careful because if there's any kind of precipitation and it's 32 degrees at the surface, we have to watch out for ice on bridges and overpasses and things like that. So let's go ahead and check out the next question. What is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere? This one may be a little tricky, okay? A, nitrogen, B, oxygen, C, carbon dioxide, or D, water vapor? Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is actually nitrogen. In fact, 78% of our atmosphere is made of nitrogen. 21% is made of oxygen, which is vital to us as human beings. And then 1% is made of a gas called argon, which kind of just hangs out and doesn't interact at all with anything in the atmosphere. It's really interesting. In fact, carbon dioxide, uh, which of course is something that we're concerned about as a greenhouse gas, is, is made very, uh, makes up very little of the atmosphere, but has a huge impact on temperatures. And water vapor varies from about 0% to 4%, and that's what we feel as humidity in the air, and that's what the clouds are made out of. Pretty neat. Okay, let's go on. This one is pretty interesting, especially if you're severe weather buff. How fast is the wind speed of an EF5 tornado? A, 100 miles per hour, B, 150 miles per hour, C, 175 miles per hour, or D, 200 plus miles per hour? You ready? Here we go. It's D, 200 plus miles per hour. By the way, EF5 tornado is the highest rank of a tornado possible, and it's very dangerous. Again, 200 mile per hour wind speeds will cause a lot of damage. So that was our tornado question. Up next, switching to cold weather, what is the coldest place on earth? The place that holds the coldest temperature ever recorded on record. We've got the North Pole, where Santa Claus lives. We've got Antarctica, B, C, Siberia, or D, Greenland. Here we go. It's B, Antarctica. In fact, on July 21st, 1983, a temperature of negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded in Antarctica. Now, all of those other places I mentioned, they're pretty cold too. Next up, another severe weather question. Here in San Antonio, we see hail a lot, but we often see small hail. Every now and then, we'll get those huge giant hail, which causes damage. But how large does hail have to be to be considered severe? Pea-sized hail, quarter-sized hail, tennis ball-sized hail, or baseball-sized hail? Let's check it out. It's actually quarter-sized hail. 
That's when it's considered severe, when it's an inch in diameter, and that's about the size of a quarter. Now, if it's less than a quarter, it's not technically severe, but if it's about nickel size or greater, it can be uh, on the dangerous side. All in all, you just don't want to be outside when it's hailing. Next step. What, sorry, pardon me, <laughs> which weather instrument measures pressure? A, thermometer, B, barometer, C, anemometer, or D, hygrometer? The answer is B, barometer. Barometer measures pressure, and pressure is how we tell if the weather's gonna be nice outside or if it's gonna be stormy. stormy. High pressure usually means nice weather. Low pressure means that clouds can develop. A thermometer measures temperature, an anemometer actually measures wind speed, and a hygrometer measures uh, the humidity in the air. Next question, we've got three more. When is hurricane season? Okay, this one you've got a 50-50 chance of getting right. A, June 1st to November 30th, or B, December 1st to July 31st. And this is for the Atlantic hurricane season. So the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Give you a couple more seconds. You ready? It's A, June 1st to November 30th. That's when we typically have hurricanes uh, in the uh, Atlantic Basin. That's when the water is warm enough to produce hurricanes. That's a long time. That is six months out of the year that we spend in hurricane season. Of course, we keep you up to date as much as possible. And for us here in San Antonio and across Texas, the last hurricane that we really had to deal with that was very bad was Hurricane Harvey, which happened in 2017. Next up, two more questions left. This one's about heat. What is the hottest temperature ever recorded in the United States? No, it's not in San Antonio, even though it gets hot here. A, 118 degrees Fahrenheit. B, 124 degrees Fahrenheit. C, 129 degrees Fahrenheit. Or D, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Three, two, one. It's D, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. On July 10th, 1934, that temperature was taken in a place appropriately called Furnace Creek, California. Not only is that the hottest temperature ever recorded in the United States, but it's probably the highest temperature that's ever been recorded in the world, right? In Furnace Creek, California. Pretty interesting. All right, final question. How are you guys doing? You hanging in there? All right, this is a fun one. Which type of cloud produces a thunderstorm? A, a cumulonimbus cloud. B, a cumulus cloud. C, a cirrus cloud. Or D, a stratus cloud. The answer is A a cumulonimbus cloud. Now these clouds are so tall, they can be up to 40,000 to 60,000 feet in the air. And the reason that they're tall is they've got a lot of energy with them and they can really get a big updraft, produce a lot of condensation and produce a lot of rainfall. So that's why thunderstorms form in cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulus clouds are those puffy cumulus clouds that you see on a fair weather day. Cirrus clouds are those high wispy clouds in the atmosphere. They're actually made completely of ice crystals and they're uh, made of ice crystals and so they make for very beautiful sunrises and sunsets. And then stratus clouds are those generally low clouds that just cover up the entire atmosphere like a blanket where you're at. So, that's the weather quiz. So you want to be a meteorologist. I hope you did well. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at weather at Hope everybody is staying safe at home and that you enjoyed this quiz.